Tap Tap here, back with more bleed. Alright, we're now boarding our good old starship. And uh, killing lots of fools. Interesting thematic break from the uh, first game is that we have pretty much a persistent enemy. Oops, I, I could have blocked that. We have a single persistent enemy throughout the whole course of this game. Uh, there's different kinds of enemies and stuff, but it's largely just a mix of throwbacks and um, this whole faction here. So in the first game, it was like a different sort of gang, I guess, each, uh, each level. I like this, like, not quite bullet hell boss here. And, like I said before, there's a lot more bosses in this game. Um, there's, like, multiple mini bosses each and every. Oh! I, I completely forgot that I changed uh, weapons to not have the slash. Wait, ah, I forget. You have to press that done button or it doesn't take effect. I'm not really sure why it's like that. It. That makes it really easy to accidentally not change. What is the alt? I don't think the alt fire does anything in this mode, so I guess that's... If you want to shoot in both directions, which I'm not sure why you would ever want to do, um, you can change the dual pistols. Cool girls do not look at explosions. And with the sword, I think it does more damage, but it's really short-ranged. And, um, like, I'll, I'll show you. Why not? What is the alt fire for this then? Yeah, it's nothing. I don't think. Yeah. So it's high damage, but it's really short range, and I guess it's a little wider. But um, as you can see there, it does not reflect bullets. Only the first slash will reflect a bullet. So I really do recommend just sticking with this. This is the katana and. Uh, Pistols are clearly how the game is meant to be played the first time, and uh, you can experiment with the others for other playthroughs. There's probably certain situations. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see like a speed run or a score run of this game because I'm sure there's certain situations in which the uh, other weapons really shine. But uh, as for a general purpose, you really can't beat this. Also, most of the other characters do not have the ability to switch weapons. They have they come with their own weapons that Ren cannot have. Uh, which is pretty interesting. We'll, we'll take a look. I guess I'll do a video after I beat the story mode. Um, drama! To uh, check out the other characters that we unlock. I'm not playing on very hard, so I think there's going to be at least one character that we miss out on. But that's alright. If you played the first game, this guy should be a little bit familiar. He looks a little different. But hey. Doesn't that look a little... Hmm. Hmm. It's more blue than, or yellow than purple, but uh, oh well. Bye bye. Oh, aren't you familiar as well? Hmm, what a coincidence. I'm sure it's not some sort of boss rush or anything. Psst. Yeah, this is a fun little callback to the uh, the robot boss rush from the end of the first bleed. It's kind of funny. It doesn't feel at quite as significant because this game, like, every level has already had a boss, well, not quite a boss rush, but it's already had multiple bosses. But, uh, if you played the first bleed, you'll definitely see some familiar faces here. With new dual polarity mechanics now. Uh-oh. The polarity thing is a really interesting thing because it's not really super 100% um, vital, like, it can be ignored, but it really does improve. You know, it's better if you don't ignore it, but... I like mechanics sort of like that, like... It's significant, but you can work around it. And so you can sort of make it a challenge if you want to ignore it, or, like... There's certain characters that can deal with polarity less, or deal with polarity in different ways. And, uh, it just opens up some interesting stuff for design. I... Yes, for some of the reflection things, you're really going to want to have time slow on. Because you need to be pretty specific with your timing when you land a hit. Oh, right. Ah, oh, frick. You 
push the wrong button. <laughs> yeah, the, I can guarantee. I, I played on normal, I believe, my first playthrough, and um, she was Ren was a lot more encouraging. And the different characters have different um, game over quotes as well, and they have there's a really nice personality to them. Also, really cool background effect, like all of this garbage in the background. I wouldn't have even noticed that if I hadn't like done time slow. Yeah, the time slow really feels like it was like designed for the katana slash and not the other way around. It's like, how did they ever not have this? Also, shoutouts to this being one of very few PC games that seems to actually do rumble properly. I think you can turn off rumble if you don't like rumble, but um. I'm just always so surprised when a PC game that says it has rumble actually does have rumble. Because I would say at least half the time when a game says it has rumble, which is already rare, uh, it usually doesn't work for me. Even when using an Xbox controller, it usually doesn't work. And it's like, I, I don't even know. When your game says it has controller support and it doesn't work with like the most common PC controller, like, I don't, I don't even know. This game has good controller support. Right. No complaints about this game's controller support, though it, it did, it was a little weird with the uh, Steam controller, it, um, Steam controller is weird, so I mean that's nothing new. Oh, hello there. Uh, oh, you look terrifying, by the way. Um, yeah, I, I reported an issue to the dev, but it might be fixed before release, since I'm playing this, you know, this is a bit before release. Um, ah. But, uh, what was I saying? I, it, with the Steam Controller, the issue was if you... You kind of have to constantly rub on the pad. If your finger stops moving, it stops shooting. Which, uh, is a little weird. I think you can, like, hold down the shoot button. But... I don't know. The, the, the Steam Controller was never a very good replacement for analog sticks. It, I really think it should have two analogs, one D-pad, and one circle thing. And it can't really integrate all of its own ideas while also supplanting a normal controller. It kind of needs swappable parts. That's what it really should have had, in my opinion. Our hero endured meager oxygen and fiery calamity to board the spaceship. By all scientific accounts, she should be dead. Her will must be strong to fall against even these odds. That's why we jettisoned the statue of old heroes into space. Reasonable. Who needs them now that we have Ren? Even amid the chaos, she found time for public service and thoroughly disposing of the wreckage. Truly the greatest hero of all time. Stay with us as we follow her into the heart of the enemy vessel to destroy it once and for all. I'm so glad Mr. News Sunflower is back. You gotta love Mr. News Sunflower. Like Tom Brokaw, more like Tom Hookaw. It's all about Tom, a horrible sunplant monster. Sunplant. Sunplant sounds like some sort of like RPG key item. You got the sunplant. Do 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 do. Ow. So yeah, bubbles. I do think that in terms of difficulty, like the difficulty modes, it does feel like hard mode feels like normal mode from the first game. Um, at least in terms of moment to moment action, levels I think are harder mostly because of all of the extra bosses. Like, I think there were some mid-bosses in Bleed 1, right? But there's definitely more of them now. Like, every two minutes is a boss, pretty much. Yeah, I don't like this boss so much. It doesn't feel... It doesn't always feel dodgeable. There's certain patterns where you have to do some really dumb stuff to survive. Like, like... Well, I could have stayed down. Th no, see that, that, that is, I don't know what's up with that pattern. There's probably a way, because of the air dash, you can be pretty narrow when you're air dashing, as you can see there, but it's still, I don't know, I don't like this boss, is my, is what I'm getting at there. Oh, here we go. What? Okay, that that is supposed to reflect the whole thing, I thought. Okay, like, like I said, I I really do not care for this boss. Uh, I think it has some alright ideas, but 
it doesn't feel properly dodgeable. And this boss is not really any easier. Like, this is not like a hard mode thing. This boss felt exactly the same on normal. Um, it just kind of feels like some patterns are incredibly fiddly with how you have to dodge. And it doesn't really feel like there's enough time slow to always deal with it. Yeah, if you touch that core, it'll hurt you, by the way, I'm pretty sure. Ah, frick. I think you have to hit that when it's, like, in the middle of going out, and then it will deflect all five bits. Whatever. We're gonna get past it. I think... I think we're gonna get past it. Like, holy crap. No, 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 no! Oh. I really do not like this boss. Okay, we're, we're good. We're good. Let's see, now, if I were doing a single segment run, like, you know, one life for the whole thing, I think I'd be very mad at that boss. But, I mean, this is probably something you can do to practice and get through it. I think a lot of developers have this, um, game design philosophy that, ow, that you should be able to sit, like, they, as a developer, should be able to beat any boss without getting a hit, and that's a really good policy to have, because that means that, um, while most players should have, like, you know, they should be able to take a hit and stuff, sometimes players, like, even good players, will end up at a boss with one HP, and they should still be able to get through that if they're really good. And being a developer isn't always the best headspace to be when testing a game, but I think when testing feasibility for high-end difficulty, yes, the developer, like, can the developer beat this without taking a hit is a good measure. But that's in terms of, like, maximum difficulty, not, like, minimum difficulty. Also, if you play on easier difficulties, um, bosses, it's not just, like, numbers, you know, bosses will... Oops, I did not mean to freaking ta <laughs> I did not mean to taunt there. Um, that's why I don't really like buttons mapped to the sticks. Um, I don't usually taunt on accident. Oh, dang. That boss had less health than I remembered it. It was just a phase, but... Uh... Yeah, on a lower difficulty, that boss only shoots out one arm. Maybe it was easy mode that it did that. Um... But yeah, bosses' whole patterns, you know, they're not majorly hardcore different, but they're different just enough to make it easier, which is kind of, you know, that's the point of, you know, an easy mode, I would say. So if you got another one of those, uh, you know, hit it from a certain angle, bosses. Ah, there's a few bosses in Majora's Mask vaguely like this one. Also, I'm really impressed with, uh, generally I find bosses to be some of the least favorite, my favorite, my least favorite parts of games. Um, like Yoshi aside, I don't think I've ever felt a boss in a Mario game was good, except for certain Bowser fights. Um, like they make great games, but they do not make good bosses. Um, except for Yoshi. Yoshi somehow has a ton of fantastic bosses. And it's kind of strange because it is the same Mario team. I guess the egg and tongue mechanics just really help them make good bosses. But anyway, what I'm getting at, most bosses in video games suck. Uh, most video games do not have good bosses. Most of the time I find bosses uh, detract from a game rather than add to it. This game has good bosses. This game, I, I do not find much to complain about with the bosses. I did... I didn't like that train boss that we had there. Um, I really can't think of any other bosses that I have significant problems with. Well, there's the ninja. I don't really like the ninja either. There's maybe like one boss on each level that's like a little annoying. Oh, no final boss for us, huh? And this guy kind of feels like a Kirby boss. You'll probably see what I mean. There's a few attacks of his that feel extremely Kirby-like. Oh, uh, here we go. Also feels a little Binding of Isaac-y. Uh, I could see that face being in a Binding of Isaac game. Except it would be like Black Tar. It, yeah, it kind of looks like Gish. Like an evil Gish.
But yeah, this guy basically got lost on his way to a Kirby game, and I'm okay with that. Like, look at this. This is a very Kirby boss. Frick. I even has the evil eye. We can't give lose. We can't give lose. Oh, it's a typo. You actually can't hurt it while it's in this form. This is like the only time you can hurt it when it's those bubbles. <laughs> so if it turns into a freaking shark. Because, I mean, why not? This is a pretty easy pattern to deal with. This is one of the more random boss fights. Uh, not really in a bad way. All of its patterns are pretty manageable. But, uh, oof. Did they ever show Bleed at AGDQ? This would be a really fun one to see a uh, speedrun of. I'm sure they will happen. What the? Not sure what I was doing there. When the bullets all collide together, I always think they're gonna do the spin attack, the the buzzsaw attack. Bye bye. Explored. Bye bye ship. Yeah, cutscene time. Wee. Dun dun dun. Guess who's not dead? Bye bye, ship. <laughs> Slightly late taunt there, but whatever. D! Ah, whatever. Breaking news! To nobody's surprise, our hero prevailed, bringing the invasion to its knees. To everyone's surprise, that blonde guy is still alive. Breaking Red's fall in an unnecessary but undeniably cool fashion. The day is all but one. But the enemy leader has challenged our hero to a public exhibition match. Uh oh, we're gonna be exhibitionists. For a title of hero and the fate of the world! Reports show the stadium filled with Valentine's allies and sympathizers. That seems fair. It's time to show them what a real hero looks like. Next time on Bleed 2, the showdown! Oh, yes. <laughs>